Good afternoon and welcome to another Delta DNA webinar. This afternoon I'm going to be looking at some of the new features that we published in release 22 last week um, and mainly focusing around some of the new engage out of game functionality on emails and push notifications. So what I'll do, I'll just very quickly kind of touch a recap over the some of the new features that came out uh, last week. Um, one of the things we got asked for by a few of our customers was that when you start building out your custom dashboards, um, you quite quickly can end up with very long lists of your dashboards. What you can do now is you can actually decide which of these dashboards should be included in your in the menus or or not. So you can certainly browse through saved ones using this browse saved dashboards and it will show you a list of all your dashboards. But when you're creating a custom dashboard now, you'll see on the edit dashboard page the layout has changed a little bit and we've now got a checkbox so you can choose whether the dashboard actually is visible to all users in the in the dashboard navigation link. We've got some other nice kind of housekeeping features like that to try and make the system a little bit friendlier where you have long lists of things. Um, so it's another example where we're doing some of that kind of stuff. In the slice and dice tool, um, and this is actually, the, you'll see this appearing in a few tools around the place. Um, we're now starting to put in search boxes around and about, so where you have long lists, it's easier to zoom in on the actual items you're interested in. So in this case, we can put in the event date, and if I want to find the unique users, I can just start typing, and it will refine my search. One of the other things we've done around about the... Well, whilst I'm in the slice and dice tool, one of the other things I've done, uh, we've done is we've all it's always been possible to filter by event date. So if I just let me just draw this one, see what it looks like. Um, it's always been possible to filter by event date. So if I grab the event date and slide it into the filter box, um, we always could filter by that, and you could do relative uh, date ranges of the last seven or 31 days. Um, a lot of people were asking if we could choose other relative date ranges, so we put in a previous end days, so you can now put in other date numbers if you want. So if you want to just look at the last 14 days, you can pop that in there and save that. And that means when you put these out onto a dashboard, you don't. the query will always be showing the last 14 days and updating. You don't need to come back and adjust the query in any way. So that's quite fun. Um, another tweak we've done um, was to derive metrics. Uh, we've all we've had derived metrics in the platform for quite a long time now um, and these basically let you take user metrics and derive new metrics from existing ones. So for example something like this one here that we've got set up here, the mission success ratio, um, that's looking at a count of events at a player level and building a success rate out of the number of um, starts and completes the ratio between them. What you can also do now, you always did have this drop down so you could choose which type of metrics you were looking at, whether it was event metrics, parameter metrics, generic metrics, but you can now also choose derived metrics. So if I create um, a new derived metric, I could now pick that mission success rate as one of the the factors in that new metric, metric, and then maybe do something else in there. I could maybe put in the number of days played or something in there as well. So <clears throat> you can now derive metrics from derived metrics and chain them all together. So that adds another kind of layer of capabilities. Also, we've added another attribution provider to the list. Um, with the attribution providers, there already were quite a number of different attribution providers um, supported and within the events panel when you create new events you'll see that there are a number of attribution events already standard in the system. Um, well we've added a new attribution provider to the list, we've added in Tengen, um, so there's an event, an event in the event templates list for them and documentation on the documentation portal. 
as to how to integrate Tengen attribution data into your anal analytics data. So that's there the, the, a kind of a really quick roundup of some of the new features or kind of new tweaks we've put in in the latest release. <clears throat> but the big the big changes, the big um, push in the last release was around the out of game messaging. So you'll see quite a lot of changes in there. Um, we've actually slightly restructured the the menus for the campaign system. So you'll see now that when you open up the engage system, we now have we split it into in game and out of game. And the in game messages, this is um, this remains actually pretty much the same as it was. So you have your actions, which is a list of reusable content items that you can deliver to the player in game game parameters, messages, image-based messages, and smart ads. Um, and so that remains pretty much as is, but what we have done is we've now added an out-of-game messaging section, and we've we've kind of duplicated this, the same kind of methodology where you have a reusable list of actions, and in this case, it's email actions, push notifications uh, for iOS, and push notifications for Android, and then you have a separate campaign management page where you can tie these together and choose who you're going to send um, actions and campaigns to. Um, when you actually build these out, let me just I'll drill into some of them and let you take a look. The user interface for setting up an iOS push notification is pretty much the same as it was before. It's just we've, we just moved it up in here to be consistent with the in-game messaging. So with the an iOS push notification, you set up the you'll give it a nice friendly name, set up the text, you can include a badge, change the action key or the sound or the image um, optionally if you want and add key value pairs um, to give a kind of custom payload if you're doing any deep linking. Um, <clears throat> you can also now add dynamic replacements so if you want to use something from the user metrics in your message you can do exactly that. So if you want to do dynamic gifting and say here's um, here's 50 gems if you come back and play tomorrow or you could do something that's relative to the number of days they've been missing or the last their last score. So you can do a number of things with replacements in here um, that are quite fun and that dynamic replacement functionality uh, that's that's new in this release and also is carried across the iOS push notifications Android push notifications and the emails system. Um, when you're setting up the emails, the the process is again it is quite similar to the setting up the push notifications. Um, the way the email system works, we've integrated with um, in this game. I've got I'm plugged into an email provider called SendGrid. They're a big transactional email provider, so you would have an account, you'd open an account with them and you essentially bind the two accounts together. You 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 enter your SendGrid account credentials into Delta DNA and then we're able to look into SendGrid and retrieve email templates that you set up on the SendGrid system. <clears throat> so essentially what you do here is you just choose which template you want to use and then if you want to use any dynamic text replacements you can add them in as well. And then you would save that as a reusable content action. So you can see I've got I've actually got three set up here. My come back soon email, my thanks for playing iOS and Android push notifications. When it comes to setting up the actual campaign, I'll I'll dig into that in a little bit. But first of all, I'll show you what these content templates look like inside SendGrid and how you kind of wire those up. So if I move across to my SendGrid um, account, you can see that inside the templates section, I've actually already got three templates set up, the same ones that we saw actually coming through on that drop-down list. And if I drill into this, we'll actually take a look at it. So this one is just a simple comeback soon email. Um, no, there's no dynamic replacements in this. It's just a, a simple image and a, a little message. And essentially, these templates get pulled through into 
Delta DNA. So the Delta DNA system can then, based on your player selection and targeting criteria, it can send a message to SendGrid saying, right, send this template to this person um, at this time. Um, going back to the campaign system, how we actually set that up, the way you set up the campaigns is very similar to the in-game campaigns uh, in that your starting point, you'll give it a name and a description. Just pop something in there. Um, and the very first thing you're going to choose after that is a player segment. Who are you actually targeting with this campaign? And that's pretty much the same, the same workflow as you would do with the in-game um, campaigns. The next thing you would look at is the when is the campaign going to run? Do we want it to start immediately or do we want to actually wait until a, a date in the future before this starts? Um, and the same with the end date. Is it going to run forever or do we have a fixed stopping point? You can also choose whether this is delivered in the player's time zone or in UTC time zone. And when you set the start date, you can choose what time of day you want it to go as well. So let's maybe say we're going to send this at 4 p.m. So if I set that up like that, starting today at 4 p.m. and going in the player's time zone, then it will try and deliver at 4 p.m. in the player's local time zone when it selects players. The next thing you would do is you simply select the action. So if I choose by iOS action, I can then choose my thanks for playing push notification, and I can put a conversion event on this just as I would have with the in-game actions. So these guys would convert when they actually come back and start playing the game. And I could then save that, and that's my campaign uh, ready to go, except I've forgotten. What have I forgotten? Ah, good one. I'll set this off for 6 o'clock. Um, that was just because it's giving me an error there because I was trying to start it in the past. So there we go, that's the campaign saved now. And if I were to go to the next page, it will give me a summary of the campaign before I then hit the start button. However, one of the things I can also do now with the push notification campaigns is we can now run these as A-B tests. So if I want to run it as an A-B test, I just hit the, the yes button on the A-B test, and then I can add in my different variant groups. So let's give variant A, um, these iOS players will give them a push notification. We'll take the other 50% the other of the audience and we're going to send them an email instead. And then we can actually measure and see which of those two channels is the, the most successful. And you can even, you, or you could even use it to, to um, compare different content on the same channel. So that's essentially how you set up a uh, a push notification campaign, the, the mechanism is now much closer um, to the way the in-game campaigns work. The old notification system was um, a little bit a little bit different. Um, so that's how you set up these things. Going back to the send grid stuff, there are a few things you do need to set up when you to in order to link your send grid account and your Delta DNA account to make all that work properly. So you'll find that inside the setup section of the toolkit, there is now a manage identity button. Um, this was always here for the push notifications anyway, and it's now been extended with a SendGrid tab. So you can put in your SendGrid account credentials um, so as Delta DNA can log in and retrieve those templates. And you can also set up what email address you want it to look like the email has come from, and a friendly name that will appear as the, the from name on the email. The other thing you want to do when you set up a SendGrid account is there are some settings inside um, the SendGrid account that you need to configure. So if I search on this, um, this, is, this again is all in the documentation site as well, and um, basically, the things you're going to be setting up there are <clears throat> the, the main thing is the notifications. So within SendGrid, when a message is sent or when a message fails to deliver or when it's opened, um, SendGrid will then ping us 
um, a notification back to tell the tell us what the player to tell us the email has been sent or opened, and then we can reflect that back in the analytics, <clears throat> and that can also then be used to target and trigger follow-on notifications. So that are follow-on emails and campaigns. So there's a, a couple of things to set up in here. What you'll find if you go to the documentation site, if you search for SendGrid, you'll find the instructions on how to set all that up. Also, if you're just actually in the reference manual section looking at the campaign stuff and in-game actions, uh, or out-of-game actions rather, if I go to SendGrid, you'll find a bunch of documentation just kind of showing you what I've shown you, how to pull the templates through, <clears throat> how to set up a campaign, and then um, there's links in there to that documentation, how to manage your identity and set up your account settings on SendGrid. One of the other things we've done alongside that kind of extension to the manage identity is we've rather souped up the test tool. So there always was a push notification test tool, um, but we've we've souped that up a little bit, given it some more functionality and extended it to be able to work with the emails as well. So what I'll do, I'll do an email one first, just as we've been talking about email. Um, let's just give this a name, test email. Um, if you know your user ID um, in the game, when you wanted to test this, you can just put your email, your user ID in and do a lookup and it will retrieve the email. On this account, this is this is actually the account for our Delta Crunch game that's in the App Store. Um, so um, we're not actually collecting emails on that, we're being um, very COPA compliant. Um, but if we had been collecting emails, we could send an email out. Or I can to test it, I'll just put my email address in here manually. And you can see the drop down list here is pulling through those three templates from SendGrid. And if I hit submit, there we go, it's telling me now there's a test email in progress. And if I come back in a minute or two, there we go, it's now saying it's sent it. And we should probably hear in the background my machine pinging and telling me I've got an email any minute. Um, you can also use this tool to send push notifications and the mechanism is pretty much the same. We can put in our user ID. I uh, just conveniently happen to know my user ID for this game. Press the look up button and it will retrieve my push notification token or if I'd been on the iOS page it would have pulled my Android registration ID. I can put some text in here and fill in the other fields that I would have done with a push notification and hit the submit button. And I've forgotten to give it a name, as always. Try again. There we go. And that will send out the push notification. And it's just arrived. Um, and there's confirmation that it's sent. If for any reason your emails or push notifications don't send, you'll actually get, you'll now get a, a far more meaningful error message than you perhaps would have done with the old push notification system. So it will tell you if the push notification token was bad or if your certificate wasn't wired up correctly or if there was some other fault. Whilst I was talking there, I've received an email, so we'll just drag that in and there's um, evidence of the new email campaign system in action. I should probably have scaled down that image in my template a little bit. It's far too huge, but it's, you can see that it's come from Delta Crunch, and if we drill into the email address, that matches what we had in the identity settings. So that's how we can now more easily test that your emails and push notifications are correctly configured. <clears throat> one of the other stuff that, or one of the other things that we've done that's quite nice with the new message hub stuff, we've improved the campaign tracking. So what you'll see when you drill into the event manager these days is you'll see some new events have popped up that you may not have spotted in the past. Um, we have the notification services event. This is fired by the SDKs um, automatically to retrieve <clears throat> your push notification token or Android registration ID. <clears throat> when we send a notification out or indeed when we send an email out, 
this new get new event here will be triggered the out of game send and this will track which campaign has just sent something um, it will also track what cohort the player was in the cohort name its id um, it will track the communication sender so that will be send grid email ios notification etc and the communication state so you'll see this going um, sense or retry or failed or bounced it'll tell you how the send got on and then when the player receives one of these you'll see a notification opened event from the device or in the case of an email those when I showed you this the inside the send grid user interface the notifications bit they will trigger this where's it gone send grid email they'll trigger this event so it means you can now far more granularly track who's getting targeted with individual campaigns what's happening when we try and deliver those campaigns whether it's a success or a fail and look at the different reasons um, and then actually track the sending and the conversion etc so you get full visibility of the campaign selection delivery and conversion all the way through as with the old campaign system let me just find an example you'll see if I just look at an example campaign from an old in-game campaign I just want to show you something real quick if we look I think at this one I think we'll show it um, when you send when a campaign is actually in flight you will get a little summary that tells you how many players were selected in each of the player variants and the conversion rates and you can then go back and drill into this data in the measure charting system um, or you can drill into it through data mining what you'll find with the new out of game campaigns you'll get a similar some little summary panel will appear inside the campaign once it's in flight but what we've also done to give you a bit more visibility with those out of game send and uh, send grid email events you'll see that you can now put these into data mining and start building far more kind of detailed campaign um, reports so this little report this is actually just looking at an in-game one and it's tracking the engaged response event and looking at the number of players in control group and group B but you can now do exactly the same sort of thing with those out of game send events and tracking the success to fail to bounce rates or you can look at the campaign campaign as a whole and look at the conversion rates so you've now got an awful lot more visibility um, as to the selection and conversion process and that's pretty much I think I'm pretty much on time there that pretty much wraps up the things that are are new inside um, release 22 uh, with the the big changes are, are in and around this out of game messaging section um, so we hope you have a lot of fun with that um, and we've got some I can't say too much but look out for some more exciting stuff in the next release um, which will be coming out early next year um, before I wrap up I'll just check with Louise and see if there's any questions have come in um, while I've been chatting away we don't have we don't have any so far Laurie um, but yeah we can hold on for another few minutes if anybody does have any questions they want to pose to Laurie um, and alternatively after the webinar you can reach us via support and we can get back to you that way as well yeah and as always this webinar will be um, put up in the documentation site and should be visit, should be ready and available in the next day or two okay well if that's everything for now thank you for watching and yeah don't forget use that support at deltadna.com email address if you need any help or have any questions about any of this thanks again bye now <laughs>